بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليه وسلم على محمد الله Hello everybody, my name is Amga Badawi This is my fourth lecture in research methodology Today I'm going to talk about something very important in research And actually, this is the reason number one for failing in your PhD This is the reason number one for failing in submitting your proposal This is the most important problem in research What's it? Your research question, methodology, and your research problem. Actually, we are going to do a research only just for understanding something. I need to understand something. So I conduct a research to understand this. I need to solve a problem. So I conduct a research in order to solve this problem. So I need to know something. And if you wanted to understand something, you have a question. This is a research question. Based on the question, based on what you want to know, you have to do your plan. This is your methodology. And from which perspective you will look at the problem, this is your research paradigm. That's why it's very important to relate three things together. Research question, research methodology, and the research paradigm. If I, I were your reviewer, I would look at search question, and the relationship between your research question and the methodology and your research paradigm. If it's poor, you will fail. If it's good, you succeed. So I think this is very important to understand. The first condition that you need to take into consideration is how many research questions you should have in your thesis. Just one research question, one big research question. One information. Why? Because if I have three research questions, I will have three PG. I cannot integrate the three research questions together. I don't have a specific aim for my research. So this is a big problem and this is, from my, my experience, I think this is number one for PhD failure. Always in nine months or infill, transfer to PhD, your reviewer asks you, oh, this is too big for PhD. You can't do all of that. So, major correction. This research question is very trivial, it's very simple. Sorry, this is not PhD, this is input. So you have to take into consideration that you have to have one research question, one big enough research question, and under, and under this research question, you can have sub-questions. Let's see how. First is research. Question. I have mainly in research three types of research questions. I know there are five, but this is in philosophy, in, in theory. I want something practical. I want to help you to do something. We have what? What is the impact of human resource practice on innovation? What is the rule of human resource development on innovation? What is the impact of ERP on organizational performance? What is the impact of citizenship on performance? So you have what? What are critical success factors in ERP implementations? What are critical success factors in clinical pathway implementation? What are critical success factors in Six Sigma? And so on. So the first question is what? Second question is why? Why do some organizations outperform others? By the way, this is the father or the mother question of all strategic management. Strategic management comes to answer one question. Why do some organizations outperform others? So based on why we have a sibling, strategic sibling, and why is actually is very interesting research question. This is why we have how. How means I understand. I want to know how these organizations are successful in implementing ERP. How these organizations are successful in implementing Six Sigma. So I need to understand how. Look at the difference. What? Mainly, general. Why? More investigation. How? More investigation. So, what? What are the impacts? What's general? 
more investigation, more investigation. This is research question. We have what is the impact, what is the impact of X on Y? What is the role of X on Y? X is in human resource development and Y is business innovation, for example. Second, what are critical success factors? Critical success factors. Critical success factors. There are more than a couple of questions in the blogger, so you can go to the blog and you see more questions. Why? Why? So why this organization is different? Why there are successful organizations and failure organizations? Why they are different? So why? Actually, sometimes we need to understand two cases. Successful, failure. Achieve, not achieve. Able, not able. Capable, not capable. Not capable to do something. So why? This is my research questions. I have methodologies. I have many research methodologies actually, actually, but there are four prominent, four famous methodologies. The first one, which is very famous, survey research. Survey research is very famous. What survey research? You have a questionnaire, you have object, you have concepts, for example, citizenship and performance. So you have set of questions ask about performance and set of questions ask about citizenship so you need to find a relationship between citizenship and the question the organizations that have high citizenship has high performance low citizenship low performance and so we need to have concept every concept measured by questions and so on and we talked about it in the first lecture okay this is survey survey research or questionnaire research. Second one is case study research. Case study research, you have a story of a company has its beginning and its end, and you come to investigate this story in details. You want to understand what is the problem in this organization? Why do people behave like this? What's happened? Look, case study answers what, why, how? Very rich, but case study has a limitation, which is you cannot generalize the results. You just study this organization, understand the reality for this organization. You can solve the problem of this organization. You can provide a tool for this organization and all of that for this organization. So you have case study research. The third one is ground seed research. Grounded theory research, you don't have any theory, you don't know anything, you go to the company, to the people, to the community, to the society, and then ask them questions, general questions, dynamic questions, just you need to understand what's happening. Coding it, all this piece of information come together to have, yes, this is means citizenship, okay, this is mean no citizenship. This is means very high citizenship. This means complicated organization. This means, and I try to coding the different words, different things into codes, and try to find a relationship between codes. So this organization who achieved this are able to achieve this. Okay, so I try to find, to develop a theory, to build my theory. And after that, I come again and again and again, talking to people many times until I found what I'm asking about is the same, the answer. So this is called saturation point or theoretical saturation point, and this is the same. I will devote a lecture for ground theory paper. Finally, we have action research. I talked about action research before, and the ground theory before also. Action research, you understand the reality, and provide a tool to solve the problem in the reality, Put the tool into action, find the results, what's happened, okay, that's fine, theory is developed. No, it's not fine. So, re-understand the reality, develop a new tool, put the tool into action, and find out what's happened. So, it's a continuous cycle. We talked about action research before. 
Okay, Christian research is the third lecture. Ground three is in the third lecture. We have three main paradigms: positivist paradigm, interpretive paradigm, and pragmatism. Positivist or positive research, positivist paradigm means testing hypothesis. You have hypothesis and you need to test hypothesis. So you have proposition, relationship between two concepts, translated it into questions. You have hypothesis between, for example, innovation and citizenship, and cities hypothesis, test it. Okay? You can test it, of course, using survey or using case study policy. Interpretive research, you don't have something to test, you need to understand the reality. So, interpretive research, you're understanding the reality. We talked about it and we talked, we say this is different reality and reality in one organization is different. So, it's called social construction of reality. That is based on the context. This is interpretive research. Pragmatism is mixed research, positive and interpretive. You understand the reality, interpret. You ha set hypothesis that this tool could serve the problem, post. put the tool into action, okay, to test if this tool is working or not. If it works, so the theory is done. If it's not, the theory is not done. So you need to understand reality again and set your hypothesis to have a tool, put the tool into action, and see until you understand what's happening. So, the so we have three main paradigms. Before I connect, you need to understand something very important. Nothing is right and nothing is wrong. I cannot say there is something right and there is something wrong. It's all of that based on logic, okay? So I can do anything. But what's rational, what's most rational, what we want to do? First of all, any research should follow survey positivist. This is a traditional scientific school. This is the classic way of thinking. So if you do that, you may don't need to rationalize what you did. But if you use interpretive case study, around the theory, actual research, you need to rationalize to say why, why you do this, why you do this, why you do this. Okay? So as long as you can solve your problem, survey and the positivist, do that. If no, say no and rationalize and then use others techniques or methodologies or paradigms, okay? The first one is survey. What is the impact? Concept. And concept, and this is called hypothesis, for example, or proposition, and you need to test the relationship between this concept and this concept. You have questions here, questions here, hi, hi. So, okay, this is, there is a relationship between this concept and this concept. If the people respond to low and low, okay, if response low and high, so it's inverse relationship and what? We talked about it later. Yeah. Okay, so this is survey research, and actually survey research is positivist. Because positivist is testing hypothesis. What are critical success factors? Very interesting research. Critical success factor need to understand what enables the organization to be successful in up implementing ERP or implementing clinical pathway or implementing Six Sigma or safety procedures or something like that. If, if there is a good literature review in this point and you have a lot of studies talked about critical success factors but you do not know if you apply this in this context will go or not so you have to have survey research. Take from literature review critical success factors. Take from literature review what's the meaning of success. Questions, questions. Put it into the industry or the place or the country that you want and find the relationship. All this organization achieves high here, achieves high here, so it works. If there is no correlation between questions, okay, so it doesn't work in this context. Okay, so it mainly should look good like this. Survey from literature review, concept, and you follow post But if it's new, or if someone 
has done this before and found there is no relationship, it's new, it's noble. So I need to understand what are critical success factors. I don't know, so it should follow this way. Case study, take a company that implemented this information system and from it to understand what's happened. Or take two companies. See here, see here, try to differentiate. Okay, this is successful, this is failure, this is successful, this is failure. When they do this, they succeed. When they do this, they fail. When they do this, they succeed. So it goes into the research. Because you need to understand reality. But the only rationale, because it's in you, it's not old, it's in your research. It's a breakthrough research. You need to understand something. No one understood this before. So you need to explore it. So it's interpretive. So it's case study. But you can compare between two companies. And you set hypothesis from literature review or, you know, you may have few literature review and the, or from different siblings. For example, someone takes critical success factor from ERP and he wants to put it into clinical pathway with the rationale that ERP and the clinical pathway is information system and they are being close to each other. Okay, it's acceptable. So he wants to investigate it and understand the difference. So he will use multiple case studies. First case study, second case study, and try to set hypothesis. Look at this, look at this. They follow what you want, they don't follow anything. And find out. If they follow what you think, the hypothesis, if they follow what you think, your hypothesis, and succeed, and these people fail because they don't follow these procedures, so okay, they will have to develop something new. By the way, case study could be positive, could be interpreted. If you have something in mind and you want to test it in the context, it's called positive. If you don't have anything in your mind and you just need to explore, it's interpreted. Of course, famous author for case study positivist is Yen. Yen is very, very famous. He has many books about case study in positivist research. Okay? So, Case study could be positive, could be interpretive, and what critical success factors could be positive and could be interpretive. Why? You need to understand.